Here we are, D Scoop 10 in the inkjet high speed. I always say it wrong. The high speed inkjet web press area of D Scoop. It is. And I'm here with the one, the only Pat McGrew M E D P C M P. And what does that mean, just so everybody knows? So, um, MEDP is Master EDP, yeah. Master Electronic Document Professional, which is an Explorer certification earned over a lifetime. Uh, you have to have been an Electronic Document Professional, which is a, a tough certification to get in the first place, for a number of cycles, and you renew every five years, and then uh, you can apply for a Master designation in a certain area. And my area is, is production communication. And CMP? So, CMP is Certified Marketing Professional, right? This is something everyone should have on their list to do. It's a DMA certification. Oh. And in, for the Certified Marketing Professional, it is a pretty intense online course with a lot of tests all the way through. And then I also did the social media certification as part of that. You did? I did. Well, that's why you're so fabulous. Yeah. So you are pretty much the perfect person to for me to pose this question to, which is, tell me about the future of print. Ah, oh, the future of print is so bright, you've got to wear shades. Um, we worry, I think, as we were coming into the new millennium. As we were coming into 2000, I think there was a lot of concern that a lot of print was going away. It was going to be replaced. It was going to be replaced by the web. It was going to be replaced by email. Uh, nobody was going to send direct mail anymore because everything was going to come to your email box. Uh, we weren't going to print uh, bills and invoices anymore because it was going to come to your email box. Uh, there weren't going to be movie posters because it was all going to come to your phone. Uh, every, every piece of print was under attack. Books were under attack. Everything was going to be on your e-reader. And uh, I, I think there was a lot of concern and a lot of predictions that print was just going to almost disappear. I mean, short of packaging and toilet paper, you weren't going to have right. paper. <laughs> and, and we're sitting here in 2015, and, and while there have been some interesting dips and some flattenings in, in wow. the paper-based communication market, the truth is that there are huge sectors of this that are growing like crazy. So uh, now, uh, while newspapers in general around the world are, are under attack and, and the circulation numbers are declining, uh, in certain markets there are visionaries who have figured out how to leverage what a newspaper is, the feel of it, the look of it, the intent of it, and turn them into not just daily news delivery devices, but communication delivery devices for direct marketing types of applications, for event type applications, for city-based news, for soccer club-based news, right, for everything. And the newspaper format is one that oddly is amazingly well embraced by generations that everybody else thought were going to hate it. So um, at the ripe old age of almost 58, let me say, young people are thinking that newspapers are cool. They're tangible, they're something to do something with. So I think, let me predict the rise of newsprint-based communication uh, over the next five to 10 years for beyond city-based news, for beyond the news in newspaper. Um, we thought that magazines would become uh, just, that, that they would go away. What's happened with magazines is weird. Actual circulation numbers per title for big glo global titles is, have come down but the number of magazines has exploded. Right. Because due to digital production techniques, now any association can have their own magazine. Right. And they can make it cost effective. And they actually- And personalized. And personalized, and they, they often find that it's more effective than an e-delivered newsletter or trying to get people to magically arrive at the website because if they deliver on a regular basis, a quarterly basis, a monthly basis, a biannual basis, a printed magazine, the connection to their constituency is maintained. Whereas if they just expect them to magically show up at the website, they watch their membership numbers decline because there's no engagement, right. there's nothing personal. And people don't always have their websites up to date or oh, some of them my just Lord, look like crap. We know right. of an association who's recently had that problem. Yes, and, but and fixed it. But fixed it. And, and so it's not an uncommon problem. So magazines, the titles are on the rise and that's worldwide.
books. Boy, we thought everything was going to be an e-reader, right? right? And, and we've heard uh, a number of our customers talk about the rise in the number of copies of books that they're printing. But again, the shift is, instead of printing multi-million numbers of copies and having them languish in a warehouse for a right. year at a time, now they're printing on demand, they're moving to digital techniques, and they're fulfilling the need of the constituency. And I'm sorry, nobody can predict how many copies of a bestseller you're really ever going to sell. Right. So the, the idea of doing maybe a big offset run and following up with multiple digital reprint runs makes sense. But what about all of those other books that get written? Right. We've all been taught that everybody's got a book in them, and everybody's a writer, and everybody should be able to publish their book. Well, because a lot of digital presses, of digital printers, took on that mantle and they believe that story, there are just dozens of print operations out there that are very happy to produce books at one. A single copy. Right, of that a book. Australian guy was telling us that. Uh, the guys from, right. from Griffin Press do it, but Bridgeport National Bindery right. does it every day. He They're, said one book, I almost fell off my, my uh, one book. I was standing, and, and so this book of one concept is one that has been just widely embraced, which means that, yes, everybody can be an author, right. and, and in fact, when it, in reality, you rarely see a copy, one copy of a book printed. Right. What'll happen is you see one at a time printed. Right. Because it'll probably sell maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of books, but they're printed as they're needed, not stored in a warehouse. Somewhere. Right. And and that's a big thing. Right. <coughs> so so it's it's a print smarter story. It is a totally print smarter story, and and it's a print more variety. People aren't shut out of print the way they were maybe 15 years ago. 15 years ago, if you were a business author who had just an amazing story to tell, but it was for a niche market. The odds that you would be able to get McGraw Hill or Addison Wellesley to publish you were a million to one. Right. And and I know this because I was published by Macmillan and published by by McGraw Hill, and it was a fight. It was an uphill battle, and you made no money at all. Right. So today, if I have the next big idea, I can very easily, honestly, once the writing is done and the content's formulated, I can get that book published and I can sell it on my own. I don't need a big publishing house. And because my overhead is quite a bit lower, I can make it possible for anybody I want to share my ideas with to buy a copy of that book. I can set up seminars, and I can afford to print books for the seminars I give. I can afford to make it available online. I can put them out on Amazon. I can put them out on Barnes & Noble. I can put them out on any of a number of technical books. You I can sell them sell yourself them. on your own website. You can sell them on your right. own website, and people do this now. So so print, print just keeps growing. And, and it's not... Um, it's not uninteresting print because today somebody who has an idea in print can find a printer to engage with to print books or newspapers or magazines or marketing collateral, right. but posters, right? Big posters, right. little posters, banner posters. They can find uh, companies to work with to print things that will then be delicately finished with amazing die cuts or Trish with Kelsey folds, right? right. And, and so there are all these amazing things that are happening and it's print and paper. And it's not going away and it's not going to go away right. and it's just going to keep on getting more and more interesting. All right, so as long as, I mean, we're sitting in the HP Inkjet booth, so how does that fit into all of this? So one of the and also, I'm sorry, can you also touch upon those really cool inkjet heads that you just announced? Right, so um, one of the things that we've seen happen since our presses came to market seven years ago, we originally thought we'd sell them to a lot of book printers. And uh, we thought that book printers were a target market because they were looking for great productivity, high speed, um, and, and good print quality, and they wanted it at a good price. And high speed production inkjet gets you there. Um, a funny thing happened. We discovered that uh, direct mailers uh, have some really interesting needs that we can fulfill. Print quality is there, range of substrates we can print on is there, so that business kind of went crazy. And then our customers got even more creative and started really moving into the realm of general commercial print. So we have customers printing posters, we have customers printing magazines, newspapers, and you name it. If you can think of something that's printed, 
we've got a customer doing it at this point. And what we learned on the webinar, it does short runs. We do very short runs. Which so freaks me out. And, and we have customers who produce book of one with high-speed inkjet web presses. They just print a lot of books of one. Right, with, but right, Paul, back back. Paul Gardner was saying he's not even printing a book. He was printing, he printed a thousand two-sided flyers. Yep. Eight and a half by elevens, uh, yep. I guess they cut them down to. Yep. On the web press. And because you can. me out. And because you can do it that fast. Right. Right? You in can, five minutes. Even. It, you right. can do it in five minutes. And you can print hundreds of of copies of books, you can print thousands of copies of marketing collateral, and we have customers who do this around the world. So that, that's a big part of the story. But, um, you know, HP is an engineering company. Uh, we never stop fiddling with stuff. And while we believe we have amazing print quality today, and we can print on a lot of substrates today, our customers have proven that, um, the engineers came back and said we can make it better. So. Uh, what will be introduced in 2016 as a product, what we're talking about right now, is high-definition nozzle architecture. We call it HDNA. And high-definition nozzle architecture uh, is a system where our current print heads have 1,200 nozzles per inch. And in the new print heads, we'll have 2,400 nozzles per inch, or 21,000 nozzles per print head. And there are multiple print heads across a print bar that allow us to print 20, 30, or 42 inches wide, wow. right? So then when you start looking at the widths, that multiplies capacity. And then we also can go up to 800 feet per minute. And, and watch for that number to keep on growing because it will. Because I'm assuming that's fast. We, it, is, it is quite fast. Okay. It, it's quite impressive. And because of the ability to print at, with these additional nozzles, it opens up the markets that our customers can go after. So that all of those sorts of general commercial print things that used to be um, considered only available to people with high quality offset presses or high quality liquid toner presses. Or high volumes. Or we can handle volumes and we can handle right. PQ. And so now automotive manuals and automotive posters and movie posters and the kinds of things that people used to say, wouldn't it be really cool if we could have a different movie poster for each movie theater so that they could have some personal marketing right. on that movie poster? Well, now we can do that with our high-speed web right. presses. We can do everything from bank and grocery store posters to, again, magazines and books and automotive collateral and jewelry collateral, uh, retail clothing catalogs. I have a customer who prints catalogs for nuts and bolts. Right? That's funny. Now, imagine, though, that, that the issue is you need to be able to show the threads in a bolt. Right. right? That's really important to the buyer. Right. So we'll be, we're doing it now, but we'll do it with even more definition and crispness in the next generation right. of print nozzles. We have a customer who prints a catalog for pet supplies, right? And they want to show dogs and cats in amongst the things, and now the fineness of a hair in a golden retriever, wow. the whiskers on a cat. Right? All of these things now just get crisp and poppier than they even are right now. Right. So, And then we'll be able to print on even wider range of substrates. So everything from offset coated to offset uncoated to inkjet treated to, to inkjet coated. So for information, everyone can go to hp.com, correct? Go inkjet web press. Go inkjet web press. And um, the Twitter account is HP Graphic Arts. It is HP Graphic Arts. And you are Arts. at Pat McGrew. I am at Pat McGrew. And once again, thank you for everything. Um, your, I just have to say, your customers love you. They're all coming over here raving about they you. Do. We love them um, too. Yeah. They, oh, seriously, they were amazing. Jetcom was amazing. We had a good um, time. Uh, and those people really were. True innovators, seriously. They are. I mean, sometimes I zone out at these things, but I was really riveted by a lot of but these stories. But did you see what happened when our Italian customer was talking about printing on PET? Uh, yeah, that one freaked out. They're like, you're not allowed to do that. And he was like, I know, uh, but I did it anyhow. Anyway. <laughs> you know, it was funny. And it's brilliant. And he's also the one that they're all, um, Giovanni, right? Giovanni. He, um, From the, a Mail. couple of people I've interviewed have, were like, I just learned that you could print posters on my web press, you know, and they're looking for him you know, to Cimeta find out. You know, Cimeta does it as well. Oh, I didn't know that, Cimeta actually. Cimeta prints posters on their press But as that well. was kind of really cool about that Jetcom event yep. was that, you know, uh, the vision was to have a 
jet ink jet community, which is what the com is for. Yeah. And you, I would have to say that that happened because the printers learned from each other. It was it was really cool. It's the first of what we believe will be an annual event. Yeah. And we're looking forward to it. Well, I'm looking forward to many, many more. Thank you again, Miss Pat McGrew. Thank you. Yay! Bye. We'll find more people. Yep.